Good to see everyone. Um, this is not going to be a typical stream. I'm going to be doing analysis of the over the board game that I played, which finished uh, finished like 90 minutes ago. Uh, played at the St. Louis Chess Club. For those who don't know, a uh, tournament just began, the St. Louis Norm Congress. People can read through this. Uh, starts today. It's nine rounds. It ends, I want to say Tuesday. Yeah, it ends on Tuesday. Most days have two games a day. Uh, finished round one, I had a draw against Aaron Jacobson. And it was a very hard fought draw. I actually blundered like pretty early in the game, and then I'm I'm very thankful not to lose. So I think what I'll do is I'll show the game, I'll keep an eye on the chat. Spain a left says play the London. I did not play the London this game, even though I was white. I played the English. Uh, don't get mad at me. I was trying to surprise my opponent. Uh, C4 is... Yeah, it's another move that I'm, I'm capable of playing. Um, I wasn't sure entirely what to expect. I thought my opponent could play e5 or knight f6 or e6. Uh, he played knight f6. I played knight c3. e5. So this is a, a typical English position. And in the past, in this position, I've played knight f3, which is one of the main moves. Um, maybe g3 is the most common move. In this position, I played somewhat of a sideline. Uh, pawn e3, which, um, let's see, let's take a look at opening database. Pawn e3, third most popular move. Yeah, it's a type of line which is not the most theoretical, but as black I play uh, the Taimanov Sicilian, and all these moves are uh, are included in Taimanov. So essentially what we got was a Taimanov up a tempo. Uh, Aaron played knight c6, I played a3. Then he actually surprised me. I was expecting maybe g6 or d6. But he played d5, entering a uh, reverse open Sicilian, which I was quite happy with because this is a position I play as black. And just to demonstrate, actually, if we go back to move one, if I'm black, uh, one of my main openings is this takes takes here 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 so essentially we got this position but i got a6 included and it's always weird like sometimes these openings like one small tempo can make a difference but um as we'll see i don't think it made a huge difference uh going back to the game okay a3 included uh aaron took on c3 which is very playable and it, it creates a situation where maybe a3 is not the most useful mo useful move. I was honestly hoping for something like this and then I could maybe go for early bishop b5. But okay, he took. And then I decided to take back with the b pawn. I had a feeling that maybe queen takes is uh is a better way to justify a3 because then I have b4 and bishop b2. But this is a structure after b takes c3. It's a structure I've played many times as black. And it's essentially this line uh, after takes takes. Um, and with or without the pawn on, on a6. Um, it's not the most challenging line for black to deal with because d5 is, uh, is very natural. So it's something I've had experience in. So b takes c3. And I was playing relatively quickly. Uh, bishop d6, d4, and he was taking a lot of time. And I think, like, okay, all these moves were pretty natural. I think by the time we got to this position, I, I've used maybe, like, two or three minutes off the clock, and my opponent had already used, like, half hour. But I was content with the structure. McSweegee saying, I played Sicilian last night, my opponent blundered a piece on move eight. Well, I blundered on move 13 in this game, and it was like really careless blunder too, as uh, as we'll see. But okay, I play rookie one, and one thing about this position is that white isn't necessarily scared of e4. No, maybe it looks scary. So after here, f5, 
the idea of playing c4 is quite uh, quite annoying for black, send c5 ideas, maybe even d5 ideas. Um, also knight c4 here, also possible. So I think, um, I think my opponent made a good choice not going for e4 too early. I should also note that, okay, when I play rook e1 and allow e4, there is a line I have to calculate. It's like probably the most forcing line. e4 here and then bishop takes h2. And I just have to make sure this isn't losing for me. They're here, here, here. Um, I actually don't think there's too many moves to survive here. However, there is one move which I'm pretty sure survives and is just winning for white. So I'll leave it up to the chat. White's a move. What's the best move? Black has checkmating threats. What to do? Your instinct says knight takes e4. Knight takes e4, rook h6. Oh, there's some funny lines. I don't think knight takes e4 works, actually. Maybe it somehow it does, but rook h6. Maybe you want to play knight g3. The problem is black's mating after queen h2, queen h1 takes and mate. And white can't play f3, allowing this move. So f3 also queen takes, queen takes e1 immediately. So as far as I can see, uh, there's a couple of people that got it. Uh, King h9, x clam, and m walker. Uh, yeah, just g3. Very simple move. Put the question to the queen. If the queen moves to h3, I have bishop f1. And then bishop g2, and I'm just up a piece, and this is weak. And life is good. So, yeah, it's something to be aware of. And it's something that I didn't really have to calculate. It's just based on experience. I know this, uh, this type of calculation doesn't work. Um, so my opponent played b6. b6 looks like a really random move to someone who has maybe a bit less experience uh, in these types of structures. But it's actually very, uh, very logical. Black has ideas of knight a5 and c5. And very often in these types of positions, black wants to go for some positional play in the center rather than the kingside attack. So b6 it puts the ball in my court. And in this position, I just I, I played very carelessly. Like I basically considered, OK, I considered two moves, but I played way too quickly. Um, what I should have done is play bishop b2 and prepare c4 and be happy. Uh, what I did, d5 was not a huge consideration. d5 is uh, a little bit overextending and could allow the knights to hop in later to c5. And also allows f5 with uh, just nice pawns for black. Yeah, so the, the move I played here was pawn c4, which is very uh, very thematic for this sort of position. I mean, next move I want to play this. And I assume that after takes takes, uh, I'd be happy here, maybe even ideas of, of bishop 2, e3. I played c4 when I wasn't really sensing any danger. And I, I really should have been sensing the danger here because black has everything kind of supporting the center. And I'm, I'm a little bit underdeveloped. And it turns out that black has tactics here, which I was completely oblivious to. Um, only until after I played the move, like right after I played c4 that I start realizing, uh-oh, like d4, h2, and a1, they're all targets. So in this position, uh, black to move and find some nice tactic. We didn't go into this in the game, because I think it's, uh, if I allow this, then it's really bad. Okay, who is this person? Electron basket. Yeah, knight takes d4. Also McSqueegee, finding the right move. Knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and queen e5 would be very hurtful for me. Hitting the pawn, threatening mate. Also skewering. And I'm temporarily up a piece, but I'm losing material. Hello to the ice. So I wanted to go into this line and... Okay, of course he um, he did take on, on d4, 
And then I started thinking for, I took a very long think here. I had an hour and 24 minutes at this point. And I thought until I had maybe 50 minutes. But he took a long think before taking, because he was making sure the lines were working out. So after he took, he had maybe like 24 minutes. Okay, so I thought for about 35 minutes. And I decided that if I do allow this, it's bad. I was calculating knight f3, queen takes a1, and then bishop to b2, um, which almost works. Like, the queen is almost trapped, but he has this move, rook takes e2. And things simplify. I can't take the queen because then I lose my own queen. I can't take this way because I'm pinned, so I could take this way. But then queen a2, and black's just up a pawn. I was trying to dig deeper and find counterplay, but I mean, this is hanging, this is a threat. White's just busted here. So I took a long time in this position because I can't go for the line that I initially wanted to play, which is this. Um, and then I wanted to play bishop to d3, but bishop d3 runs into bishop g4, and I'm also hurting here. This bishop takes f3 as a threat. I can't take because this pawn's pinned. Um, I can't take the other way because then queen takes e1, takes, takes, bishop f1, and then takes and knight e2 is coming, and I'm just lost. So it's a very painful position um, because like the two moves I want to play, bishop d3 or pawn takes pawn, neither of them work. So I thought like at this point, maybe 10 to 20 minutes into my think, I thought I was just going to lose. Like I thought I had to like go for one of these lines and just be down material. Um, but then I found a somewhat creative approach, which involved, okay, it does involve giving some material, like every line I'm losing material, but um, it created complications. And the move I played was bishop to b2. And at first it looks terrible, because after pawn takes pawn, uh, this is a threat. This e3 pawn is well supported. But somehow after bishop to d3, it became a little bit tricky because my bishops were actually quite happy and my rook was aligned with a queen. And I'm sure there is some way for, for black to be better here. But during the game, it wasn't that obvious. A lesson for you here, always connect your rooks. Yeah, I think this is a, a important lesson, like even at the higher levels. Like before the, before you allow the center to open up, your rook should be connected. So c4 is just too early, too premature. Um, bishop b2 to connect the rooks first is much better. So I, I don't fall victim to these tactics on e1. Okay, so I play bishop b2. I should also note that I'm not using Stockfish for this analysis. Um, I know the Stockfish analysis is on Lee Chess. What I actually did, I had to download the Lee Chess game, remove the annotations, and then put it into a new study um, just to make sure that there's no, uh, there's no analysis here. Um, but if people want to look at this with analysis, you're, you're more than welcome to do so. I can share the study in the chat. Um, and if I put this on YouTube, I'll, I'll share the study in the, the YouTube video description. So bishop b2 um, takes bishop d3. And the good thing for me was I was I was doing decently on time. And okay, he was taking a long time here because it's not that easy. Because uh, my bishops are scary, his queen's a little bit, um, a little bit in danger. So he decided to take... And now I have to take with king, sadly. If I take with queen, I run into bishop c5, and that would be bad. So I take with king. So I'm down a pawn, my king's on f2, but somehow I still had compensation. He plays bishop c5, I play king f1. And then this is where I kind of start dictating play. Uh, he plays queen, he played queen d6. The thing here, I, I win back one pawn. So even though I'm I'm down two pawns, I'll win h7. Um, he had to play here or here, I believe. 
So queen g6 was natural. I take here. And then I had to be accurate. Um, like I wanted to play rook a d1. Rook a d1 runs into rook takes e1. And then it's not great for me, whatever I take back with. So I played rook e d1, avoiding the trade, hitting the queen. And the queen was a little bit tied down to the bishop. Um, now I was actually starting to feel decently here. Like I felt so badly a few moves ago after pawn takes d4. But then like time was on my side. I had initiative. Uh, he played queen e6. After the game, he was thinking queen h6 was better. And then we could go into this line, takes, 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 takes. And it's equal material. And we were analyzing a little bit, like knight a5. Um, I think both sides still have chances. I have an active rook, but my pawns are a little bit weak. Yeah, I was up on time pretty much the whole game until the very end. I'll, I'll, we'll have to get to the end because there was many, there were many different stages to this game. So we played queen e6. I played rook to d5, uh, which I was very happy about. Like the rook is hard to attack, and I'm threatening rook h5. Also, ideas of rook e1 or d1. So I felt like I had sufficient compensation for the pawn. And then after the game, he was saying still queen h6, and we would actually go into the same line. Uh, but he played f5. Now f5, I think, was a mistake because I win the pawn back and I keep control. It's attempting to trap the bishop. Uh, but the problem for black is after rook e1, I'll eventually take on e8. And either his bishop, his rook, or his queen will have to recapture, uh, which means I'll have three attackers against two defenders on f5. So that's essentially what happened. Uh, queen f7 was played. I took on e8, takes. And now here I actually took a long think. I mean, okay, the most natural move, of course, is just taking f5, winning back the pawn. But I really wanted to play queen d2 with so many beautiful ideas. Um, like one idea is that if bishop e6, I have queen h6. And I think I'm I'm just crushing here because I'm threatening mate. Um, I'm also threatening this. So like if queen f7, I just do this and mate. So the pin is, is just so deadly. <clears throat> and then if, I think there's knight d4 here, but then something like, I could even take with bishop, maybe takes with bishop and queen h4. And it's so difficult for black. Actually, maybe queen h3. Queen h3, and this is coming. So I wanted to show something really cool here. After queen takes e8, I wanted to play queen d2 with the, this idea. Okay, so I showed the idea of queen h6 attacking the bishop. I was calculating this really fascinating line. Jonathan Sampson, thanks for subbing with Twitch Prime. Um, <laughs> I did not officially, I'm, I'm not a chess bra, I'm just living in the chess bra apartment, or the chess bra cave, I guess is what we call it. Um, so yeah, and I'm using their, their amazing immaculate setup right now. But I'm in St. Louis, I'm playing the, the St. Louis Norm Congress. So I was calculating bishop e3 here. I really wanted to go into this, but I had no idea what was going on, and I thought it might just be losing for me. So bishop e3, rook takes d7. Bishop takes d2, rook takes g7. I'm down a queen for a minor piece. Down a queen for a bishop. Well, it looks so fun. Hey, it's a thousand bits from the abandoned castle. Thanks for the bits. So we were actually having some fun, like analyzing this after the game. There, are, um, there are a few other players who, who this position caught the attention of. Like JJ was was analyzing, and uh, Chesswee was there. Um, 
and it was it's just so confusing for me like i don't like these types of positions where like it could it could just be losing it might be winning but it's probably losing somehow i forget what we were analyzing bishop i mean bishop c1's a move also 95 maybe playable like there's weird ideas 95 where now the rook's attacked and if takes 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 and i'm down the exchange and my bishop's stuck um but then we were looking at this line rook takes c7 and i'm still threatening the knight but then there's bishop f4 and i think we were looking at knight h4 g3 it's just so confusing but then rook f7 Yeah, Chessweeb. Chessweeb saying such a strange position. Uh, probably later I'll, I'll analyze this with Stockfish. But I'll leave it a mystery for now. Um, I would guess black is somehow winning. But um, I don't know. What about rook f7 immediately? Wait, rook f7 in this position? No, rook f7 in this position I just take. Rook f7 in this position I can still take. The problem is when I take, it's checked to the king. In knight h4, rook f7. Oh wait, it keeps going. So this is the main line, rook takes c7. Um, bishop, yeah. Bishop f4, knight h4, rook f7. Oh, bishop, yeah, we were analyzing this position. It's so ridiculous. Like, there's so many pins. I'm still down the queen. What is this? Anyway, food for thought. Let's go back. In terms of, like, the practical nature, I thought, I mean, I thought I could just take, and this is just, it's easier to understand. I thought I'm slightly better here. Uh, we traded. And then he plays king g8, which kind of surprised me. I was expecting queen e3. I think this leads to a draw, because this is a really annoying threat. And then we were looking afterwards. Like I could play knight h4, but then there's some annoying perpetual. If I play king d1, then there's this move here, and then takes and wins a queen, or wins a knight. Um, also, after queen e3, we could... We could draw by uh, by me giving perpetual. So he played king g8. Sort of surprised me. Told me after the game he, he didn't want an immediate draw. He just wanted to keep it going. Maybe create some chances. But my time situation was nice. And I played queen d5, which I thought was natural move. And then he surprised me. He played queen f7, which at first I thought... Like, the, the first three seconds of looking at this move, I thought, oh, free piece. But then I realized if I take the knight, queen takes c4, and I'm losing my queen. This is the only legal move. And then, okay, bishop f2, and he wins the queen. So, um, I didn't take the poison. I decided that there's no great square for my queen, so we traded. And I thought white is like slightly, slightly better here because my king comes to a nice square. And I can get to e4 essentially before he gets, before he prevents me. Like my, my king is guaranteed to come to e4 because I, I play g4 at some point and then I, I just control all of these squares. And then I have the potential of the outside pass pawn, like g4, h4. And his pawns are a bit slower to move. Um, and then on top of that, I had a, a nice time advantage. I was still up, mm, still up maybe 20, 20, 25 minutes on the clock. Um, he had less than 10 minutes at this point. If we go forward, king e2, g6, king d3. And there was a point where I, I felt like I was very close to a win. So I played all the kind of natural looking moves. Played a4 here. I was actually debating in the game. Because I know he wants to play b5. I was debating if I should play like knight g5 first. 
thinking knight g5. If he plays king e7, I play this. Or maybe I play this. Just thinking about some funny line, like king e4 here, and then I, I fork these pieces. But of course he has king d7. So it was tricky to evaluate. I figured a4 is flexible. Like I want to play a4 um, anyway, get the pawn off the dark square. b4 is not a concern at all. I just play king e4 here. This knight's doing nothing. Looks like king of the hill. Yeah, if this was king of the hill, I would win. <laughs> um, I was not thinking that during the game. So he was low on time. I was feeling decent. Yeah, at this point he was probably less than five minutes. Uh, knight d4 to trade off pieces and you're winning, yada yada. Yeah, I, I did want to play knight d4. The problem is I lose a pawn because he takes once. He doesn't have to take again. He can take on a3. So if I could somehow force a trade of all the minor pieces, then yeah, maybe there'd be winning chances with outside passer. But um, but yeah, I think the strategy here is to like slow down the queen side and then make headway on the king side. So he played knight e7. I think this was a bad move. Um, I think we were saying after the game, like the bishop should be on e7, and the knight should somehow get to c5. So I was thinking bishop e7 and then maneuver the knight and um, offers black a, a better kind of setup. But he played knight e7. This made me happy. Played knight g5. And then h4. So yeah, his king was actually forced away. He can't move. It's funny, he can't move to any of these squares. Uh, the knight, bishop, and pawns are nicely coordinating. And if he plays king d6, I'm very happy to play knight e4. Let's say king, king can go anywhere. I'm going to take the bishop next. He can't take back with the king because bishop a3. And I'm pretty sure this is like completely winning for white. It's outside passer, bishop versus knight. This pawn fixed on the dark square. So king d7, best move. h4, c6. I thought I was very, very close to winning here. Because um, it, it turns into a race. I play h5, takes, takes. Then he played a move which I initially forgot about, but I still thought I had chances. He played knight f5. Stopping the pawn. And that's the question how I actually make progress. Because there's there are a few different options for me. Um, I mean, what I played in the game didn't seem to work. I really wanted to play knight f7. This is so close to winning. So if I can control h6, I can just push. And... Like, for example, I was calculating this, 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 and I'm just queening. He can't access g7 because my bishop. Uh, the problem with knight f7 is he has bishop f8 controlling h6, and then it's very hard to make progress. His king is ready to attack the knight. He's ready to trade. So what was the time control for this game? It was 90 minutes with a 30 second increment. So after every move, we get an additional 30 seconds, which means we have to take notation for the whole game. So yeah, at this point, like after knight f5, he's already less than two minutes. But my time was ticking down too, because I was trying to calculate like this. I also really wanted to play this move, bishop g7. Um, it's a really funny move, because after it takes here, it looks like I'm just, I'm gonna queen. However, black has black has at least one way to stop the pawn. Knight h5, h7, and then knight f4. Knight comes back to g6 just in time. So um, I do see questions. I'm going to hold off until the end to answer questions. But I will take questions about this game. Um, oh, someone's saying bishop c1. Ah, uh, bishop c1 may be in this position to prepare h6. I think it's too slow. Like king here. Nine knights kicked. 
If I move here, then King goes back. Uh, I'm on Leechess. I'll share the Leechess link again. If people want to analyze, oops. if you want to analyze on your own, you can go to this link. So, what I ended up playing, I kind of played on intuition, but I was trying to calculate. I played king e4. Maybe on the surface this looks like a blunder because I get forked and I lose a pawn. But the point is after knight g3, king f3, takes king g4, the knight's trapped, controlling all these squares. And then it's a matter of somehow winning the resulting endgame. But I think he played very precisely. He played bishop e3. Okay, I win the knight. And he just completely simplifies. Takes, takes. And it's a really interesting position. Like if my king is on f4, like if I get one tempo, it should be winning. But um, he played b5. Yeah, so it was a really crazy game. I mean, there are so many stages in this game. Like I, th I thought I was going to lose after 13 moves. And then it got really complicated. Like this whole attack on the king's side and then the end game is still very crazy. So yeah, after b5, the problem for me is that if I allow, like let's imagine I just move back. This is a move I, I would want to play. The problem is he just takes on c4. And even if I win all his pawns, it's not enough to win the game. He just walks his king to eight, and it's a theoretical draw. This bishop is the wrong color bishop. So I had to keep, I had to keep the c pawn. I, I can't give away the c pawn. Like if I'm going to win this game, um, I have to play c5. So I play c5. It's the only move. And then he plays king e6, and this is a problem: is that my king is kind of boxed out. And his king's coming to d5. But my pawn is on a dark square. It can be defended. So I play bishop a3. I think after the game he was saying... What was he saying? Bishop d4? I thought bishop a3 gave me the best chances. Probably everything here is draw. Um, I'll just show what happened. Bishop a3. Defending, preventing any b4. Uh, he plays king d5. And then I have a couple choices. I can try and go around this way, or I could try and come back this way. I thought king f6 was my best try. Then he played a move, which I actually did not see coming. And then I was actually nervous that I was going to lose the game. Um, he played a5. And then all of a sudden I'm realizing, uh-oh, like he wants to play b4, and he's going to win the pawn. And if takes, takes, these pawns are really fast. And my king was actually completely out of play. I just forgot about a5. I was calculating, I thought his only idea was to like bring the king to b3. And then, I thought I calculated a win here. If you're king c4, king c4 is gonna play king e6. And then one of the main points after b4 takes takes, I play this and this, 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 this. Or, yeah, I mean, this is just winning. Because I have uh, like this or this in the end. Um, so I was actually optimistic when I played king e6. But he played a5. And then after takes takes. I, I was at this point below like below two minutes and I was trying to think like how do I how do I just simplify for a draw I played c6 takes I play king e5 and then he plays b4 I think this is a good exercise if I'm not mistaken okay I might be mistaken but I'm pretty sure there's only one drawing move for white in this position so white to move. I'll leave it up to the chat. White to move and draw. I also offered him a draw. I offered him a draw after playing c6, which he obviously turned down. Like he's, he's the one trying to win now. 
Okay, most people got it. King d4. I mean, this is a move that I I played, which I know is a draw. Bishop takes b4 is a draw? What? Takes, takes, here, here. Wait, bishop? No, this is losing for white. Um, oh, it's bishop b2. Yeah, just to show this line. Um, this is a, a classic win. Here, here, here. Yada, yada. So bishop b2 is drawn, really. I thought bishop b2 was losing because of this. And then this, this. Ah, maybe... I don't understand. Okay, I'm going to use table base, because <laughs> I don't want to use so much mental energy. Table base. Oh, so it is a draw. Bishop e5. Ah, I just wait. Oh, that's brilliant. Wait, king b3, king d3. Wow, I just wait. Because black can even get the pawns to b3 and a3. Oh, here bishop b2. Bishop b2, here. King d3. What? Bishop c1. Oh, yeah. So you get to this position, and like b2, you're in time to play this a2 it's just bishop b2 okay so yeah thankfully okay <laughs> there was uh there is a simple way of drawing and then okay i played king d4 and then the point is after takes here i just walk around like even if a4 this is just dead draw so he played king b5 trying to win um, so I did not play king e4, so <laughs> this was a broadcast error. He played, I think he played a4 and offered a draw, which I accepted. And then we put our kings in the middle of the board to actually declare the result. You put your, the, um, the kings in the center. So that's why it said king e4, but king e4 was not played. Delete. Game ended here. Um, if white wins, then the kings are placed on the light squares. If black wins, the kings are placed on the dark squares. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it was a crazy game. Um, I mean, I thought I was close to winning at some point. Um, or maybe at multiple points. But I also thought I was close to losing. Like in this position, I thought I, thought I was just dead. And somehow there is comp. I feel like this is a position to analyze with the engine. Maybe I had something better. And then later too, like maybe this position, like somewhere around here, probably this position is something to analyze as well. So I'm gonna probably put this on YouTube. So for the YouTube audience, Hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm gonna try and do this for every game. Um, but of course it depends on my energy levels. If I have some long games, it might take a few days to actually post these videos. And then I'll leave links in the video description to Lee Chess Study and the tournament website so you know what's happening. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video.